What's good YouTube and Twitch? Today I am here with our April winner of the Zodiac Duelist Tournament, the reigning defending undisputed about to face Space Lolly champion, Logan Kaplan. Greetings, travelers. Team Yeet's own, to add to all that. And uh, here we have uh, his deck that he won the tournament with in front of us, and that three out of fine, knock down, drag out, brawl of the finals. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Why don't you start on the cards and, uh, you know, saying all the ratios and stuff, and I'll just highlight them and say why you chose, what uh, if you think there's any need for explanations. Alrighty, so uh, first of all, I played two second donkey. I think three is too many. It clogs really bad. You don't want it that much if you have, uh, like, really bad scales to play it in. Only if you have master is it okay. And then... Uh, I mean, if you have Sky Rice, it's alright too. But yeah, I chose two instead of three just because of consistency. I didn't want to open multiples of it. And uh, two Lizard Draw should be standard. I chose one Get Turtle instead of playing two because the draw option, I felt like, isn't that good in this deck because the cards that you want to draw are a lot of time cards that you could be searching out. So, for example, if you draw your Counter Traps, then that makes them not live anymore for Ariadne. If you draw your Skyrus pieces, they're not live anymore for Skyrus searching them. Cards that are good to draw are like Max Z and the obvious like Buster and the like good cards like Pendulum Sorcerer, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's just another high scale, which you already have plenty of. So, then uh, Silver Claw, I played specifically because it's like the ideal poppable scale with Sorcerer. Uh, you don't play two anymore because like all the cards to get to Luster went to one, so there's just no reason to play two. Um, and like the attack boost is nice as well, and it's like just a good card to open with, like much better than some of the other cards that you could see in your opening hand. And then the one Phoenix, one Unicorn is like I don't know. It's it's a really weird ratio because you could play multiple Phoenix or multiple Unicorn, but you definitely like have to go two one ratio either way around. I've tested it both ways, and sometimes like summoning the Phoenix is pretty good. Like being able to pendulum summon the Phoenix late game and make a vortex just from the board is pretty good. But the Unicorn is always a high I scale. Think always playing. Yeah. Uh, so. Right now he's going over his deck list for YouTube that he won the last tournament with. Uh, continue. Sorry. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Auto Eyes Unicorn is a high scale, which makes it really good, but it's a shitty monster because you can't summon it. And uh, its scale effect is kind of relevant. Nobody really cares about either the scale effects of the Auto Eyes cards, but the fact that Unicorn is a high scale, and um, it's the one that you want to usually ditch as fusion material if you're fusing with Vortex, like not from them having two or more monsters. You want to ditch Unicorn. As it like, if you get a sorcerer search and you plan on fusing with that, then it's unicorn that you're ditching as the odd eyes monster, definitely. Yeah. And obviously, one monkey board, one joker, three sorcerer. And then, uh, pendulum isn't really played anymore, or at least, like, I didn't think it would be played much going into this tournament, so I did opted to only play one vector. And, uh, because of that, I also put painful decision down to one since I didn't have multiple normals, so there was no reason for multiple painful decision considering master isn't like the best card like it's definitely a really solid card that you want to see a lot but i don't know i didn't feel like it warranted too painful decision so uh, yeah because i took vector down to one but painful decision to one as well and then i had i played two ariadne because it has a lot of value with skyris you definitely don't have to play it at all it's like six cards of an engine that you just don't have to play like you could play different pendulum monsters or you could play more spells instead of all the counter traps, but it definitely has synergy with Skyrus and Sorcerer, so I liked it. And then Abductor is just like the most broken card for this deck. It's so good. It searches you whatever you need. The spells, like, it's so good with Skyrus. If you get one Skyrus activation after you activate the Abductor, you're basically guaranteeing your Abductor search almost, unless they want to, like, negate a spell that you're trying to do or a scale. But, um,. It also is really good in the mirror because it works off your opponent's spells. It's also like good against monarchs too, because it works off of your opponent's spells. So you just like, because one of the really cool things about Abductor is it's it doesn't have a counter cap on it. So like it says remove three, but it doesn't have a counter. So if they don't like get rid of it, then it just will continuously gain you advantage. Yeah, it's a card they it's have nice. to deal with. Yeah, it's so good, so good. And then uh, so. Honestly, main deck, cyber deck, Dre, and like 
13 cards on my side were because I knew he was playing Cosmo, because he chose to play it all of Swiss, and then went into a bad, or like went into the top eight with a like not optimal build of Cosmo. Like it was quite slow. Not only was it quite slow, there were like a lot of interesting choices. For example, I saw MST instead of Twin Twisters at one point in our match. So it's just like, I don't know why you would still be playing MST when you have the option to play Twin Twisters. But uh, yeah, I, I, it was a me pre-firing what he was playing for the Cyberdeck Dre or Cyber Dragon Dre because I knew exactly what I was getting into with that duel. And if I was wrong, then I mean, it's I guess still I a have four to outplay him. It's yeah. a four you can overlay with. It's still the best one to, to put in in case. Yeah, and I have like the Twin Twisters and Raigeki and Valor in my side, so like I'm not completely screwed when it comes to other matchups. So uh, yeah, I played. I chose to play three Max C because he was playing Cosmos, but uh, he also was playing very slow Cosmos. So it uh, could, definitely could have been cut down to two and had like done the exact same thing because he was not playing Combo Cosmos. Against Combo Cosmos, you need three Max C. It's so good. Uh, there's actually yeah okay. In this build, there's three search targets for Iris, and in my like, in the build that I would play on ladder, if I were to ladder, I would play two Odd Eyes Fusion, so there would be four search targets. And then one Terraforming, I feel, is standard. I feel like it's better to play, uh, like, three Skyrus, one Terraforming, than it is to play two and two. Because even though you can set the Terraforming as a bluff sometimes, you can also pop the Skyrus with your wizard and then place a new one and get its effect. Or, like, if they decide to MST or like slip rider your skyrus away then you have the fresh copy of another skyrus instead of a uh terraforming that could you could run out of skyruses later in the game yeah yeah and then i played ignite reload mainly so i could get um like not only another chance at different hands but like if i open the unicorn and i needed to search it or like opening multiple masters it's just really 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 bad so uh the fact that Ignite Reload is like the only card in the entire game that lets you shuffle the master from your hand back into the deck while like netting you the same amount of cards and letting you summon it from Ignister from the deck again. It's like the only card in Yu-Gi-Oh that lets you do all those things. And then obviously one face off. And then I played, I used to not like Upstart, but like definitely the ban list dictated that you should be playing it at one. And especially since Magical Abductor is so so prevalent in this deck you definitely have to play upstart but uh most decks i usually don't like upstart like mermails are any uh exception and even then like i didn't play it upstart in them at the beginning because i was so focused on killing other people and um yeah the solemn brigade i chose to not play chaos because uh honestly it's worse against cosmos than the strikes and solemn which i knew he was playing so and my side, just like all Cosmo cards. The reason I played uh, one core, one Sydra, instead of um, like, I don't know, multiple Sydra or multiple Drays is because if I open the core and he opens with like call on DD and I go summon core, he goes call on DD or like tag out a pilot for DD to stop my Cyber Dragon play. Like I no longer have the Cameratech tray play if he goes it, does it on the Dre or the regular Cyber Dragon. So if it's on the core that he makes to send it to the graveyard play, then I can just banish the core and get another Cyber Dragon out and blow him out completely. And then, um, do you want me to explain my extra at all? Uh, we can just go through it as a list. You have Utopia and Utopia Lightning. Uh, it looks like you didn't really have room to play the extra material since you wanted to diversify. Uh, so why two of the Odd Eyes Vortex Dragons just to make the raw fusion from your extra deck? Uh, yeah, just so you can use the Send 2 effect from the Odd Eyes Fusion. And um, honestly, you could play any Odd Eyes card instead of the second Vortex, but I'm playing this, or like my main build, the build I'd be laddering with, would play two Odd Eyes Fusion. So there's always the possibility that I get to summon both Vortexes in a single game because I resolve both Odd Eyes Fusions. In that situation, the Rebellion just sits in my extra deck does nothing, but, I mean, at least I have both the Vortexes to go into both of them if I need to. Someone's saying you can't do what you said with uh, Core. They're saying the search effect is mandatory. What? I, um, what is he talking about? I have no clue. Uh, I mean, 
you don't have any Cyber Dragon spell slash trap targets for core. So yeah. like you literally go normal summon, and if they respond to it and send it to the grave, then you banish it and special summon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, there's, I think he's wrong. Yeah. There's no problem with the play at all. Um, let's see. You have a uh, giant hand, Emerald. Obviously, really good for shuffling stuff back. I uh, I think it's necessary this format. Uh, we saw a lot of your broken boards with giant hand. Uh, what made you decide to play two Dinosters still? Um, because a lot of people have cut it to one. I did not know that, but I, a lot of times I just make Dinoster and we'll sit on it, just like I make Ignister and sit on it. Because yeah, I don't play thirty-eight Hopebringer. I feel like that takes away too many resources. Like I'd rather be protecting my own Ignister than like the only thing that Hopebringer really like outs is Stormforth and Raigeki, which in the first place it's kind of subpar to be making Ignister against Monarchs in the first place unless you're going for game like that battle phase so you're probably just better off making like Dweller or Giant Hand or something against Monarchs instead of like going for Dinosaur or Ignister plays because like Monarchs a lot of the time it's either like set up for a turn kill them the next turn or they're already dead or you're just losing because Domain is on the field and it's RIP Oh, okay, so they're saying that the Cyber Dragon core still uh, activates even though there's not a resolution target. Mm, okay. I, think, I don't I don't know. I'll I read honestly it. don't know which one's Second, right. I'm good with rollings, I'll go read it. Yeah, but let's go ahead and wrap up this profile and get into the duel. Billy's gonna help me commentate here, this so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so let's go ahead and wrap this up, and uh, thanks for sharing with us, Logan. Mm-hmm, no problem.